Hi, this is Queenie Yu from Bullet Point News. I'm with Leland Klassen and Dan McCauley. So first, Leland is a Canadian-born actor, writer, and producer known for Sleeper Agent, Stealing the Show, and Extraordinary. Mm. Leland is also a comedian who provides clean Christian comedy for outreach events, events and church ministry. He has tour toured all across North America and has appeared on Just for Laughs on the Comedy Network, CBC Television's Halifax Comedy Festival, and Thou Shalt Laugh on Netflix. He also hosted Popcorn TV for 170 episodes, as well as his very own show, Leland Klassen's Comedy Tournament. Married to Carrie, yeah. they also have two sons. Um, Dan McCauley is a Canadian-born worship leader and singer-songwriter who currently lives in Buffalo, New York. He has been married to Danielle for 17 years, and they have two young boys. Mm -hmm. Dan and Danielle can also be seen together bi-weekly on the nationally broadcast Canadian show, A Better Us, for which Dan also wrote and performed the theme, the theme song. The show Dan is designed, the show is designed to strengthen and encourage marriages as well as the building block of families. Dan has won a number of awards for his songs as one of the top Canadians consistently charting on Can Canadian Christian radio, Dan has six number one radio singles to his name so far. So Leland and Dan, welcome to Bullet Point News. Hey, Ooh, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. I forgot that I, you did all that stuff. And I, I forgot that I did all that stuff. <laughs> I feel like I could be reading off some of your stats now. <laughs> so the both of you will be performing in Laughing All the Way at Springvale Church in Stouffville. Could you tell us a bit about what the audience can expect when they come to the show on December or the 10th? Well, now that I know how to uh, pronounce Stouffville, you expect me to get that right. <laughs> I've been saying it wrong this whole time. You were. Yeah. You were st Stouffville or something? Yeah, Stouffville. Stouffville. <laughs> Stouffville. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. A laughing all the way event is a bunch of some Christmas carols and getting people to sing along. It's a bunch of comedy and getting people to laugh along. And it's a, it's a mix. Like one, one moment you're doing one and the next you're doing the other. And we just keep changing it up all night. So we, we started years ago when we first started working together, it was just kind of like, we like that blend, that mix of uh, comedy and music. And, and as we started doing more and more, Dan started doing more comedy. <laughs> That's true. true. And we just kind of, it just kind of became this one, uh, this one chunk of, it's all, what's what uniform, a big uniform kind of a, a show that it combines everything together. Mixes it all up. So right about the time you're getting tired of comedy, I bring some music. And right about the time you're getting tired of music, he brings more comedy. Yeah. And we just keep going yeah. back and forth. We'll just keep switching it on them. <laughs> they, they can't get bored or something because no. we just keep switching it. Yes. That's great. Leland, tell us a bit about clean comedy. And is it hard to find enough material for your shows? No, it's it's, ne it's never hard to find material for my shows because I make fun of myself a lot. So, <laughs> so there's you lots to work with. There's tons to work with. I haven't even scratched the surface of uh, what I can work with. Uh, yeah, no, I make fun of myself a lot, and and uh, um, I've just always done comedy clean. People always ask me about that, and and uh, you know, I I don't. I don't know. That's just, that's just all I know. That's how I, I know how to do it. And, uh, you know, even in working in clubs and things like that, that's just always how, how I've done it. And, um, yeah, it's easy. It's easy. Can you Anyone us? can do it. That's... Queenie, you can do it. I'm oh, up on great. stage. Yeah. Come on up. <laughs> sure. Um, so the both of you will be performing at the church. Um, how does comedy relate to church ministry? Um, well, they usually get pretty offended. We, we don't, we're not invited back usually. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. Uh, no, I mean, hey, listen, especially at Christmas time when it's a time of, of hope and joy, uh, we're emphasizing the joy and uh, people, people, especially these days, people need to laugh. They need to get out and laugh. And, uh, you know, uh, the church is the perfect place to do it because that's mm -hmm. a place where we direct people to hope. Yeah, it depends. It depends on people's religious upbringing and their their kind of preconceived ideas about what church is or or the nature of what of what the church is. But I mean, I think uh, a lot of churches that I grew up going to, we, we laugh all the time in, and yeah, there's yeah. nothing there's nothing not sacred about laughing. God created laughter. It's good. It's good medicine. He he created me, and I'm the one that makes fun of myself. So he gave me tons. Of, he's the one that gave me material. <laughs> 
Dan, could you talk about A Better Us and how you and your wife try to help strengthen marriages through the show? Sure. So uh, Better Us is uh, on every week on uh, Yes TV on Thursday nights and uh, a few other places over the course of the week as well. We are, uh, my wife and I are part of the show and we're on every other week. We alternate with another couple. So we've been on uh, the show since the beginning and uh, it's, it, we, we love being a part of the show. We always say that being a part of A Better Us has been the very best thing for our marriage because um, when we were asked to be a, a part of the show, we're like, I don't, we don't feel qualified to, you know, advise anyone about marriage, but that's actually the beauty of the show is that we don't, we don't really <laughs> we better get to, our act together yeah, before we, we start talking it about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the format of the show is we'll have, um, a, uh, uh, an expert on to talk about an aspect of marriage for uh, there's short, maybe like four minutes, uh, someone like, um, like a Gary Chapman, if anyone knows that name, he wrote a book, really famous book called the, the five love languages guys kind of of that caliber. So we'll have them on and, and talk a little bit about an aspect of, of marriage. And then it, it cuts to, um, three, four, three couples uh, in, in a kitchen, and we're usually uh, often one of them, and just talking about those ideas and how they relate to our personal lives and our marriage and how we've experienced those and maybe a couple other thoughts. So you guys should you should bake something while you talk. <laughs> we've then, never tried that. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Just, I'm just throwing some ideas at you, right? <laughs> okay. So uh, anyways, and, and so it kind of takes the the teaching out of the high and lofty kind of teaching thing and and brings it down to real life and our real life experiences with it and and i think you know couples can relate to that we get positive feedback uh, really everywhere i go now i keep finding people that oh we watch the show we love it and and uh it's great it's great to uh be helping because i i feel like uh marriage and 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 families are the core of of everything and um there's a lot of a lot of things that push and pull on our ability to do that well and right and so anything we can do to help people and strengthen that's great plus pinball clemens is one of the yes just want a great cup great cup winning manager that's right pinball clemens that's right he's uh he's a pretty awesome guy so i want okay, i wonder if he'll bring it on the show this is coming the season the great cup just Ooh, that's a good idea plunk it right on the kitchen table we actually have a, a brand new season of it season six is starting in january so really soon um what do you mean by marriage is the building block or families is the core of everything can you explain that yeah well i mean i think i think god's de that's god's design in my opinion of of how he created life to function and I think it's at, at home and families that uh, kids can feel safe and secure, can learn values, can learn um, just everything about how to do life. And I think that they pick up those things uh, from the example that they see in their home. And that can be a positive experience or a negative. I'm sure we all, we all have both positive and negative experiences, uh, that we've grown up, you know, seeing. <laughs> and yeah. then we become comedians. Yes. <laughs> to, to, to cope with that. That's right. I think what you're saying now is, is something that's been widely accepted for hundreds of years and only recently has, has there been like controversy over, over saying things like family is, you know, right. anyway. Yeah. It's getting pretty serious. Are oh, you, yeah. you're not going to make it yeah. cry here. <laughs> no, 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 no. We better get uh, to funnier stuff here. Yeah. Let's yeah. What if it's bogged down in all this marriage stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so people listen to their favorite songs over and over again, but I'm not sure they want to hear the same joke over and over again. So Leland, right. how do you write new material and make sure that someone who has been to your show once can come back and still find your performance entertaining? You are going to make me cry. That's what you're doing. <laughs> uh, no, it, that's definitely, it's definitely uh, something that I have to uh, continue to be working on. Um, I, I actually write set lists for every, every show I've ever done. I actually write it on paper. I'm old school. Uh, and then I keep every set list. So if I go back to Stoville, I get it right. You said it. Yeah, you got it right. If back, yeah, if I go back to Stoville and I've been there before, or in the same you know venue or whatever uh, venue or church or whatever, I I go back and I look and see what, okay what material have I done. Uh, now I will do some some things over because they're kind of people's favorites. Uh, maybe talking about my big hands. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, I, I try to, to change it up. And, and Christmas time, I have specific Christmas material, and I'm always always working on stuff. 
And Dan, how do you get inspired writing your songs? It's me usually, right? Yeah, I, I write a lot of songs about Leland. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I don't know. The, the, the most, the bulk, the bulk of my songs are worship songs. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're about God and, and life from that angle. So I don't know. There's, there's lots to be inspired at with him. I mean, there's been, uh, songs being written about him since the Bible and, and, you know, the Psalms themselves and pre that I'm sure. So there's always, there's always lots more to, uh, to discover with him there. I think uh, that's the awesome thing about God. He's so big that uh, we're going to spend eternity getting to realize how big he is. So there's, you're going to be writing songs. You're going to write eternity. even more songs. Yeah. 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 When we, there's, he's, he's, he's that amazing. So I don't, there's no, there's no shortage there. I think the, I think uh, for me, the trick in, is actually slowing down life enough to take a second and actually remember and rediscover who he is and, you know, read it, read the Bible and, the Holy Spirit makes what you're reading kind of come alive in your brain and you realize the reality of this is not just some fairy tale story, but no, this, this is real. And oh my goodness, I've almost like lived with blinders on and forgotten about how awesome he is. You know, one of my favorite things we did the other day when I was picking him up from the airport, we had to drive through a rural place and all of a sudden he's looking at me, I'm trying to drive, but I'm like looking out the window at this because there's no light pollution there and the stars are so incredible. And like, every time I look at the stars, you know, the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and every time I look at the stars there's like a, a deep calling out to deep that says wow there is a God and he's awesome so and meanwhile I'm like hey, hey, hey watch the road watch the road watch the road you trying to get us killed and, and that is I, don't wanna, I don't want to start a turn yet <laughs> I gotta get to Stoville <laughs> yeah okay great um a director told me that the most challenging movie genre to do very well is comedy Leland would well, you agree oh I don't know I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Not for me. Uh, I, I guess I've always spoken in that language, the language of comedy. Uh, that's how I've always kind of related to people. And so uh, I, I did. I've done a drama. And what were you I was going to. Well, I was going to say what, you've done both. So extraordinary is drama. There's very little yeah, comedy yeah, yeah. in it. There's only maybe a couple little comedic moments. Yeah. And then and sleeper agent. So which one was harder for you? Well, I. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if one was harder than the other. I uh, except maybe the running. The running, I had to run a lot in Extraordinary, that's for sure. I had to cry a lot in Extraordinary as well. And people always ask me, oh, how did you, how do you cry? And uh, I always tell them about, you know, uh, Avengers, when uh, when Captain America says to the Incredible Hulk, or he says to Bruce Banner, hey, now would be a good time for you to get angry. And he's like, that's my secret. I'm always angry. And I always say to people, uh, that's my secret. I'm always on the verge of crying. <laughs> so it's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> so it flows pretty easily when I need yeah. it. Uh, no, I, I, you know, listen. Uh, it's definitely, I've seen people really struggle with comedy because they don't, they don't get it because there is a timing to it. And there is a, you know, like I said, there's a language to it. And uh, so I, I, it's just a language I'm really familiar with. So I'm, I'm comfortable mm. doing it. But I think it's like anything, um, you know, the more you do it, the, the easier it gets and, and drama. I really enjoyed doing the drama. It was, it was fun too, to, have, to explore my serious side, like right now. <laughs> like we're doing in this interview. Yeah. Like, like I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leland, when did you start doing comedy? Oh, uh, well, actually, I didn't start uh, doing stand up till after I got married. I got married and then I had, uh, well, I had all this material. <laughs> I was like, hey, <laughs> I got to tell somebody about this craziness. <laughs> no, um, but, but uh, yeah, actually, I did start after I got married. So I've been married for 28 years and I've been doing comedy for. I've been saying 25, but it's probably more like 26 years of comedy, maybe maybe a little more, 26 and a half or something like that. You're old. I'm really old. <laughs> Dan, I was really um, young when I got married, really young. <laughs> I was four years old. <laughs> I, I, my, my mental maturity was four, oh, right. for sure. I asked my wife one time, sorry, let me just say this. No, I, this gonna say. My, I asked my wife one time how old she thought I was when I was old enough to actually be married. Cause we were in our forties at this time talking and she thought for a second and it didn't take her long. And she was like, like 35. <laughs> I was like, that's had, how old I thought I was when I was mature. But you had been married 10 years or so at that point. Yeah. 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> 12 years to be mature and, enough. And, and what was be... one of your, uh, what was one of the first, uh, Christmas presents that your wife gave you? <laughs> so, <laughs> she got me our first Christmas and we were a, a, a month in and she got me, uh, 
It was a, Sh- a Shaquille O'Neal figurine. It was toy. a toy. It was, it was a, toy. a toy. My wife bought me a toy <laughs> for Christmas. That's how immature I was when we got married. <laughs> All right, um, Dan, how, uh, sorry, can non-Christians appreciate your music? Oh, yeah, they do. I mean, I I hear from them that they do. And um, just to be clear, so in the context of laughing all the way, um, I I think I do only only one of my own songs, uh, a Christmas song that I've written, uh, because for the purpose of laughing all the way, we want pe- non-Christians and everybody to be totally familiar. So the the real, the focus of laughing all the way is, is Christmas music. So um, there's a it's, few. The, the whole show is designed to be something that somebody could walk in off the street and not know anything about uh, Christianity, church or whatever, and still just have a great time. Yeah, so that's, I mean. That's, that's how the show's designed. We do a carol, a carol sing along for a chunk of time. With we we cover, I, I, I should count how many carols are in that. There's a lot. We blow through, you know, everyone's favorite part of a lot of different carols, and and man, the crowds have been singing really uh, great so far on this tour already. Um, and and you know, everyone knows the carols whether they grew up in church or not, and they can sing along to that. And um, I do another upbeat Christmas song that during it we have. Um, movie clips uh from you know home alone and christmas vacation and the christmas story and the grinch and all the you know the the classics that people are like seeing their favorite moments while while i sing that so that's a you know emotional touch point for people as well and something that oh, look at elf. Go back to the yes exactly. uh, he is uh, a son of a nutcracker <laughs> isn't he <laughs> So anyways, we uh, work really hard to make sure that it's relatable for everyone. Uh, outside of laughing all the way, yes, uh, my music is is mainly, you know, uh, God-focused. Uh, but uh, even people who um, doubt for now, that even that there is a God, um, can enjoy the musical part of it uh, and, and have, and I hear that. So, um, but yes, laughing all the way is, is really for everyone that way. Uh, the songs at, in Laughing All the Way are basically the songs that they'll hear on the radio, you know, the Christmas carols. Yeah, for the most part. There's a there's a couple that are outside of that. Um, there's there is one where, um, you know, that, that that talks about, you know, in the midst of all the other craziness that we, we sing about and fun and stuff that that Jesus is the central reason for Christmas. And we make sure that that's uh, that's presented. But yes, initially and overall, the idea is, you know, wide wide net for everybody how, who's familiar how dare we talk about jesus at christmas yeah right it's only <laughs> his birthday <laughs> what do the both of you think about when you're on stage um, i love to let it off <laughs> stage. No, I'm just i <laughs> honestly i'm like if i'm telling jokes i'm thinking about how long you can stay on stage <laughs> I'm looking at the time. I'm thinking about how people reacted to that. Do I need to change this? Do I need to do? Yeah. I got I got an inner dialogue going that's just has nothing to do with what I'm saying. And uh, and then sometimes I'm thinking about if somebody reacts to something and I'm I'm talking to them and I'm interacting, then I'm I'm coming off something off off the top of my head. Um, yeah, it's a real gift. He'll he'll interrupt like you have set things that you'll often say, but you're you interrupt them all the time to interact with people and. Oh. I mean, I just interrupt them. Hey, hey, are you talking? To- <laughs> no, but you interrupt your whatever set yeah. things that you normally say. Well, and- <laughs> as long as I can remember where I left off. Right. That's where I'm like, okay, what, what was I saying now? Where was I? I'm a little ADD at times. So that's my problem. But you want that from a comic, right? You want the interaction. It's- it's, listen, that that's what live comedy, that's why live comedy is so much better than something you watch on TV or something like that. Uh, those are great. Those thou shalt laugh and the just for laughs and all this. That's great. And they're, they're fun to watch, but nothing compares to a live show where something could happen that night. That'll never happen again. Uh, it's, there's something unique and special about a live comedy event. Yep. So stop the lockdowns. I'm anti lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom shows are horrible. <laughs> Dan, what do you think about when you're on stage? I'm not saying this Zoom show. No, this is great. This is fantastic. (laughs) I'm getting great feedback from Queenie. This is perfect. (laughs) Dan, what do you think about when you're on stage? Uh, For me, I so if I'm singing, uh, most of the time when I when I'm on stage, I'm leading worship. 
uh, again, not so much in laughing all the way, but, uh, and, and I'll be singing songs I've sung a hundred times for me. I, I've tried to, uh, apply those songs to, to my moment to, and think about the, the Lord, the one I'm singing about. And, uh, so that, be, so that it's fresh. So even though that I've sung this song a hundred times, I'm, I'm thinking about him in a fresh way so how, and expressing it. How would you do that with the like a Christmas carol that has nothing to do, like yeah, say so, Jingle Bells or something. I don't know. It's, I don't even know if we sing that in, one. But. In, Chris, on, uh, in, in Laughing All the Way, especially in the Christmas carols, I am, I, I'll get the people singing and I back off a little bit from singing mm. and, and let them sing. And that's where I find the most enjoyment. Like I was yeah, really yeah. moved uh, the last two nights hearing the crowd yeah. sing the carols back. In fact, I, I was saying like, we've been prepping for the tour and sometimes it's just like, you're just doing it. It's like, a, it's work, it's a job. I've got to, I've got to get all this piece and this piece and this piece. Um, and not necessarily feeling very Christmassy about it. Mm. But the other night when the crowd was really singing the carols, yeah, yeah. I had a moment where I was like, oh, I feel Christmassy yeah, yeah. for the first moment. Like, this is so nice. Like ever, hearing, you know, all the voices together yeah, singing that. That's uh, and, and, and that's the idea, hopefully, that it does for other people, too. I often say that if you're not feeling Christmassy yet, if you just came because someone dragged you or you came in faith because or that you came because it's Christmas is what we do. But you're still not really quite in that mindset hearing a room full of people sing you know and we do everything from away in a manger to the grandma got run over by reindeer <laughs> and so it's a real... it always gets me every time because my grandma did get run over by reindeer. <laughs> it wasn't santa it was just a ran, random reindeer right i grew up in northern Saskatchewan. there's some reindeer <laughs> get him <them> killed <laughs> i'm kidding so, uh, you know i will uh, say this though too i i sorry queen i just i'm just gonna add this that I also do feed off when people laugh. I, I enjoy listening to that too and, and getting a kick when they're really having a great time and all together as a collective unit just laughing. And uh, that always makes me like, this is like, okay, this, you know, this feels good. This is something that uh, I'll, I'll keep stoking the fire here. This will be, this will be fun. <laughs> That's great. Um, young people see, like they seek likes on social media. And it gives them this, you know, um, dopamine uh, rush. Many people watch the both of you. Like, how can you not let the large audience get to your head? Ooh, oh, that's hard to do sometimes because yeah. you definitely feed off the audience. Like, it's easy to, as a performer, uh, it, it's easy to uh, derive your self worth in that moment from uh whether you feel like they like you or not whether you feel like you know everyone clapped enough or was into it enough or laughed enough or whatever and you're like oh i i failed tonight or i did great tonight there's there's a roller coaster we're gonna do we've done two already there's another 12 to go on this tour so there is a there is a temptation to be to ride the roller coaster from night to night whether the crowd is into it or not yeah yeah and i, I fell victim to that too but but one thing that I, I learned early on doing stand up, uh, and I have to remind myself of this is that it's, it's a it's a service industry, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm providing a service, so um, it's not it shouldn't be something that I'm trying to get from people, but it's something I should be giving to yeah. people, and it's it's a mindset you got to kind of, uh, and which also falls pretty good with Christian values as well. <laughs> yep. But but it served me well in, in comedy clubs and stuff like that. It was like, oh no, I'm I'm here to give to the crowds that come here. This is this is for them. This isn't for my and, and self worth it, it, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I mean there is some of that and you gotta you gotta push that aside a little bit, but yep. but that's definitely how I look at it. Try to look at it. Leland, what did you do before stand up? Um well I have a degree in anthropology uh my a sub discipline of ethnology so if you have any questions what is that i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> i barely passed <laughs> no it's a study of man essentially and the four sub disciplines if i can even remember those uh is like like archaeology so we did we did some some stuff some digging yeah we did well we had some stuff that we had to kind of did you ever have to take like a bag of sand and replace it with a <laughs> yeah i had uh, to run uh, from a boulder though i yeah, didn't do that did. but i had to run you from a boulder it. in right. a big okay. cave um i know what anthropology is yeah I <laughs> that's right knew. yeah 
Uh, well, that's that's one of the sub-disciplines. This oh. linguistics is another, and it's just it's basically the study of man. Uh, cultural anthropology is my main. That's what ethnology is. That's my main sub-discipline, and I just was fascinated by different cultures. And what's very cool is comedy. People always say laughter is universal, and it is absolutely. But comedy is very cultural. Like there's certain things, even in different regions I go to, where something is funnier to some people that's not as funny to others, and uh, it's it's very interesting. I was gonna if I was gonna continue to 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 school, if I was gonna get like do I was gonna do my thesis on like humor and and comedy or uh, humor and cultures, mm. but I can see you guys are both glazing over, so I guess I picked the right thing. <laughs> like, uh, it was interesting. Uh, I've also noticed that most comedians are men rather than women. Do you have any, both of you, any comments on that? I think um, <clears throat> the stand-up culture is is pretty dominated by by men. Um, it, it's just kind of the way it's, uh, I guess that's how it started, maybe, and that's and so that's kind of continued. But there's mm. lots of, there's lots of of female comics out there who are fantastic. Um, you just you just got to look for them. There's there's tons that are. They're out there working now. There's one of the best comics in Canada is Erica Sigurdsson, and she's uh, out, of, out of Vancouver. Just fantastic, one of the best in Canada. Okay. I'll check her out. Um, what did the both of you want your audience to think or do when they leave your show? Well, I I just remind them about the hope that we have at mm -hmm. Christmas, and and uh, I specifically talk about you know, who we're putting our hope in and, and, and the reason for reason for the season kind of thing. So, um, you know, I, I don't think we're doing anything too, too heavy, but I do want people yeah. to, to know, Hey, just the, we have hope. <laughs> we talk about at Christmas time, people kind of have that like, yeah, there's hope, but we kind of forget what that, what we're, what we're putting our hope in. So I just, I just remind people uh, about that and, and, and hopefully they, they're encouraged when they leave. Yeah, there's a, a line even in the intro that we say it's time to turn up the laughter and turn down the stress. So we want to, we want to, uh, you know, laughter is good medicine. Christmas can be stressful for a lot of a lot of people. So it's that again, that recall of the Christmas, all familiar Christmas things, uh, forgetting about, you know, the stress of things and, and, uh, and, and laughing, enjoying yourself and then remembering, you know, what it's all about and that we have hope even because of Christmas, even if outside of that, you know, there are things going on that make us feel less hopeful than we'd like to feel. So it's, it should be, it should be hopefully be, you know, a stress relief as laughing already yeah. is anyways. And, and uh, meeting you in your Christmas culture that everyone is and uh, pulling uh, and to towards hope and reminding the hope that people have. And, you know, we want people to, like we already kind of said, like when, when, for example, one moment on the show, when everyone's singing those Christmas carols and you're, you're in a room full of people that is doing that, there's just, it affects, I don't know, it affects me emotionally, like we said, and it uh, might call back to, you know, some hopefully positive Christmas memories that you've had along the years and, and hopefully override some of whatever other stressful things are going on in people's lives at the moment. Do you perform at any charitable events? Uh, sure. Yeah. All the time. I yeah. did a crisis uh, pregnancy center, uh, uh, Christmas party, um, like a week ago. Yeah. And one, uh, one, our Winnipeg, uh, date is a charitable event too. It's oh, tied yeah. to uh, the hope center. Right. Right. Um, is that what, did I say that right? I think I did hope center. Yeah. 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 Uh, which is, uh, they, do, uh, they help, um, handicapped and uh, and challenged folks that way too so yeah yeah we have lots over the years yeah, yeah. And, and we're also actually working with with compassion on this tour oh that's right yeah uh, compassion international which is uh you know a, a child sponsorship organization which does really really good work mm -hmm. and and it's and it's actually pretty these days uh they've been hit pretty hard some of those countries so it's uh it's needed now now more than ever yeah great what words do you have for Stovall residents before your show on Saturday, December the 10th? Bring your depends. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to say that in an interview. Uh, come you on out. your dream. Yeah, I just did, yeah. It's, a lot of people have <laughs> a lot higher dreams. Well, you know. Higher, yeah. <laughs> uh, come on out and uh, we're gonna have a great time. 
yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Uh, I think if if you're a, a, a churchy person, if you're a church person, uh, and that's familiar to you, then great, come. Uh, if if you're not, come. It's for you too. There's uh, you're gonna feel at home. You're gonna be, be fine and feel comfortable. And I would say also, it's a great thing to um, invite friends to invite neighbors to because yeah. it's so much uh, Christmas familiar familiar and uh, and you, Leland talks about everyday normal things like you yeah, don't have to be a be no. a christian to I, understand leland's comedy or like it yeah this is stuff i do and it would do in a comedy club. exactly yeah you know so the thing about the show the thing about the show too is you know dan's a, a, a successful recording artist he's got songs on the radio this is this is a really high quality show i've i've done a bunch of stuff a bunch of tv um you know i don't know i don't know how 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 big an axe Stovial normally gets, but this is this is a, a pretty big deal. You guys should come out. We we think we think it's pretty good. Yeah, great. Right, we don't want to toot our own. We don't want to toot our own horn here, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nice. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. That's a louder horn. Yeah. Right. yeah, I was being more humble with my little horn. You heard the horn big. Nice. <laughs> Great. So I look forward to seeing the both of you on December the 10th um, in Stowell. Yeah. Thanks for yes. having us on yes. today. This is fun. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon.